So the ATF just dropped another proposed rule. This one targets pistol braces and wants to treat any pistol with a pistol brace as an SBR. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think the ATF needs to be abolished, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel, that is Route 66, Shooting Sports Park in San Bernardino. If you guys came out to the Armed May event, you know that Route 66 is an amazing shooting range there down in the LA area. So if you're in SoCal, I highly recommend you check them out. And thank you again, Route 66, for supporting this channel. So if you haven't heard by now, the ATF issued a new proposed rule. This one is targeting pistol braces, and it seeks to treat any pistol pretty much with a brace as an SBR. This is something that the ATF has been after for a long time. There was a proposed rule back in December, which was then kind of pulled off the table in January. And now we have a new one popping up. This proposed rule is 2021R-08, which is also known as the factoring criteria for firearms with attached stabilizing braces. So that's what they're calling it. And this is all geared towards giving um, some sort of criteria for when the ATF considers a pistol with braces to be an SBR or a rifle and not necessarily a pistol. This proposed rule actually redefines the definition of what a rifle is in both the GCA and the NFA. And it actually adds in a sentence at the end of those definitions. And so here is what they're going to add on to the end of the rifle sentence. It's going to pretty much be any weapon with a rifled barrel and equipped with an attached stabilizing brace that has objective design features and characteristics that indicate that the firearm is designed to be fired from the shoulder. So this is something that's been an issue for a long time. They're saying now that if something is designed to be fired from the shoulder, then it is indeed a rifle or an SBR and therefore will be regulated as such. Now, how does this proposed rule actually go about doing that? Well, like I said, first they go in and they amend the definition in the GCA and the NFA in regards to what a rifle is going to be considered to be. And then they give these criteria in which the ATF will use to determine when a specific configuration of a weapon is indeed an SBR, a rifle, and not a pistol. So how are they actually going about doing this? Well, again, they say they are putting together a criteria and in this fact, an actual worksheet to actually come to the determination of when something is actually an SBR. And when you look at it, it is pretty much just like a third grader's report card. There are criteria on the left and then they give you a point system grade on the right, depending on how the ATF is interpreting what you're doing with your specific weapon. So first what they do in this kind of report card and what you actually see in the proposed rule is they say that anything that is 64 ounces or above and has an overall length between 12 inches and 26 inches is actually going to be subject to the ATF's grading. They then actually also state in the proposed rule that any firearm that weighs less than 64 ounces or is more than 26 inches is not going to be considered at all to be a pistol and is not actually even gonna be part of this evaluation because they think those types of weapons are not suitable for use with a stabilizing brace. So those altogether are kind of left out. They are only going to be considering those that again, 64 ounces or above, or have an overall length between 12 inches and 26 inches. If it meets that first criteria, then there are two other sections on this report card, and then they kind of march through those sections. And if you get four points in any one of those sections, either section two or three, and those four points are accumulated based on those various criteria and factors on that report card, well, then your specific weapon pistol build is automatically deemed to be an SBR and subject to the requirements that an SBR would be. Now, how do they say they're going to award these points? Well, one point is awarded, for example, if there is a minor indicator, which they say means the weapon could be fired from the shoulder. And then there's a maximum of four points that can be awarded if there is a decisive indicator, which the ATF says means the weapon is designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder. So again, you can see how arbitrary these kind of definitions and point system actually are in this proposed rule. And then for example, when you look at various sections, like in section two, where it says that if something like a brace incorporates shoulder stock design features, then it's awarded a certain amount of points. There is that criteria, but then they don't actually state what exactly incorporates shoulder stock design features means. In very ATF classic form, they just kind of leave everything super vague, overly broad, arbitrary, so that they have a lot of discretion and wiggle room to bring certain things within those actual definitions and requirements and categories so they can award more points. And the whole goal is to point out this little worksheet 
to pretty much consider any type of pistol that has various factors and features and criteria, point them out, give you four points in either section two or three so that your specific build is considered to be an SVR because that's the whole goal of this. It's not to actually clarify things. It's not actually to give guidance. It's to create a way in which they can consider these various weapons to be SVRs and further regulate them. This whole worksheet, that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to find ways to give these specific weapons points to point them out and treat them as SBRs. So for example, if you look at some of these sections even further, like I said, section one is the prerequisites that kind of make the specific weapons subject to this report card thing. Um, section two talks about accessory characteristics. Uh, there's accessory designs, which that's where the incorporate shoulder stock design features is there. If they find that it has that, then they award you two points. If they think there's an accessory designed based on a known shoulder stock design, so if it's kind of similar to a known stock design, then they're gonna award you two points there in that section. Um, then there's the rear surface area, and then they talk about material added to increase rear surface for shooting, then they award you three points. So if there's enough surface on the back of the pistol brace um, where they think maybe you would shoulder it, then they're gonna give you three points. And just right then and there, you're pretty close to already filling a section and then all of a sudden your weapon being an SBR. And then when you look further, they have other things like talking about the type of cuff that the pistol brace has and, and based on the design of the cuff, it being fully or partially or doesn't wrap around, then you get a certain amount of points. And then they even talk about the strap. If there's a strap that doesn't fully go around your arm, well, maybe then they're gonna award more points. And again, you would fail that section and they would treat it as an SBR. And then in section three, they talk about the attachment method. And they say, for example, a standard AR type pistol buffer tube uh, six to six and a half inches. If there's a standard buffer tube like that um, and the pistol brace is attached in that way, well, you get zero points. And then further down in that for attachment methods, then you see stuff like, well, an extended AR type pistol buffer tube, well, that'll give you two points. And so as you can see, it kind of creates this weird like system and this point system where people are gonna have to look at their pistol builds and be like, okay, so how do I think the ATF is actually gonna award points on my specific build? Well, maybe, okay, I have an AR uh, pistol buffer tube, but it's extended, so I'm gonna get two points there. Okay, so I have to, only two more points. I can't go over two more points because if I get four points, then I'm gonna be pointed out and this is gonna be an SBR. Again, it's absolutely ridiculous the way that they set this up. Um, I'll put a link to this down in the details section so you guys can review it for yourself, but I just wanted to run through this real quick, give you guys an idea of what they're doing with this as I kind of read more through it. If I get more information, I will definitely uh, update you guys. Um, one of the things I also wanna let you guys know that this is a proposed rule. There is going to be a comment period that's gonna open up for this. It is not open currently. So similar to what we saw recently with the proposed ATF uh, frame and receiver redefinition, uh, when that one was proposed and it hit, there was a little bit of lag for the commenting period. So again, keep your eye out. I will update you guys when the commenting period opens because we are definitely like with that frame and receiver issue, which I hope you guys left a comment on already. If you haven't, go do that one as well. But when this opens, we are all going to need to get out leave our comments on this, let the ATF know. We know they're ridiculous. We know what they're trying to do with this, that they're pretty much going to try to treat every pistol, AR pistol, AK pistol, whatever, as an actual SBR. That is their end goal. It is not to clarify. We're gonna let them know that. We're gonna leave our comments on that and we're just gonna flood them and let them know that Americans and gun owners in the US do not agree with what they're doing. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure to hit that notification bell because that helps the channel analytics, helps to spread the word about the Second Amendment, I'll spread the word about 2A news like this that is going on in the US to infringe on our Second Amendment rights. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and nation will be maintained by armed scholars.